Dating when you're trans is complicated, to say the least. A lot of us have extremely bad self-esteem and often beat ourselves up over it like who the hell would even want me? A lot of well-intending cis people in my life has gone, well, isn't there a dating app for people who specifically want to date trans people? You should go on there and I don't know if it exists, but if it does, it's not a place where I want to be. We know there are those who are into trans people, maybe a little too into it. In fact, there's a lot of them and you don't even need a specific dating app to find them. In the trans community, we would call this kind of person a chaser. DISGUSTING! And believe me, it's not a good thing, it's not someone you want to be with. This is a nightmare! Now, if you're blood related watching this video, you have two options. You could either go watch another video, a cat video like God intended, or you could watch this, but you must promise to never speak of this video ever, and you better pretend as if this video doesn't even exist. Like, we'll never talk about it, never mention it, okay? Tapish, you got that? You got that, buddy? Alright, the rest of y'all already know the drill, watch the entire video through, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thanks! So, whenever we speak of chasers, it's almost always about those looking for trans women. I don't know whether that's because there's more of them or not, but because of the lack of conversation regarding trans men chasers, I was under the impression that I had nothing to worry about. So that was a f***ing lie. Only after... Um, coming out and socially transitioning at least, did I realize that, boy, boy was I wrong. Yeah. I don't have enough personal experience to make an entire video about it, but what I do have is a trans mask friend with experience, and that's why I thought it would only be fitting to make a video with it. Without further ado, Julia Caesar, take it away. Take it away, buddy. This big blue Anyways, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Jules. I use he it pronouns. Uh, I'm just a non-binary dude, mm -hmm. and I don't know what my sexuality is. Valid. That's valid. Um, how would you define a chaser? Uh, I would define them as someone who fetishizes trans people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much it. Usually it's like, to a point where like they dehumanize them mm. and they mainly view them as something for like their sexual pleasure or i was thinking about this last night i'm mm. curious about your opinion on it where i feel like there's also people who fetishize them but more in like an aesthetic sense aesthetic um well because i was thinking more about like you know that period of Tumblr where it was like, ooh, ooh soft <gasps> trans boy. <gasps> I'm triggered. Because I was thinking, <laughs> I was oh thinking about how that never felt like outwardly sexual. Yeah, so I was no. like, no, no, no. It's, no. At that point, you're treating them more like an accessory, and I feel like that mm. would still fall under like chaser. chaser. Yeah, yeah, no, I think my past uh, relationship or whatever the fuck mm. uh, you would call it, yeah, that gave me kind of. I yeah. wanna have a Tumblr soft boy vibe and then yeah. he, he found out that uh, I'm kinda gross. <laughs> <laughs> and realized that I'm just like another dude. Yeah, uh, just like that whole kind of like infantilization type yeah. thing. Mm. And then it's like, oh, wait, you're a grown man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So is there a difference between being a chaser and someone who's simply like extremely attracted to trans people? So I was I was thinking about that and I I do feel like there is but I've personally only seen like healthy forms of oh I just have a preference for trans people from other trans people. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't want to say like, oh, no cis person who's just prefers trans people has ever done it for a healthy reason. Cause like, I don't know, I don't know every cis person, but if they exist, they at least seem rare in my experience. Could you fetishize a cis person? <laughs> I don't know how you do that. Cause like. <laughs> oh, I just, 
really like that you you identify as a woman and you have uh, a uterus and you have oh I just love your natural <laughs> isn't that with turfs dude they're basically oh yeah yeah cis people ah oh, your feminine womb have you read that post about someone like a witch turf they they were like oh this Tim at my seance and I just like spread my legs oh and yeah my oh womb. my god. <laughs> Like you're insane. Like that's low keys. I don't know what it is, but it's it's not okay. <laughs> oh god. But yeah, have you ever encountered any chasers while dating? Yeah. Um. You you do know about my brief period of using grinder out of boredom, and that that oh. is just flooding with chasers all over the place oh god yeah like you'd think it would because you know i i think everyone knows that there's chasers for trans women mm. on grinder oh yeah that's um, all i know yeah but they definitely exist for trans men as well in fact a lot of chasers in their bio will say like only into cross dressers or trans uh masculine people like that's that's a bit that's a bit weird so basically any trans person oh i've i've come across that on tinder someone like extremely like red flag bio it was like I'm very stubborn and blah 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 just putting out his flaws all over the place and then he's like by the way I'm really into trans people okay it's like oh no <laughs> no yeah <trans> person. <laughs> that's like like a guarantee that no trans person is ever gonna want to match with you yeah like on grinder I've definitely um like people are more outward about it because I mean it's just like a hook up hookup app that's mainly populated by cis men. So of course most people are mm. just like gross on there. There's there's no social pressure of like oh I have to <laughs> I have to make the woman think I'm not gross. <laughs> um, I think it was like Bumble as well where people will be more subtle about it. But I did see someone where their bio was into women or trans masculine people. And it's like, uh, oh, you just mean AFABs. Uh, <laughs> if I saw that damn thing in my dating app, I'd stomp on it until it was a small brown stain. Dude, so it's basically like women light. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's like, I respect your pronouns, but uh, you're still a woman to me. Bruh. Yeah. I wonder how they would feel about someone who's like gotten all the procedures. <laughs> See, something I did notice on dating apps like um, Hinge, where mm -hmm. on that one, you know, you have several pictures and like paragraphs and people can like a specific thing on your profile. Oh, no. And I do think it's interesting <laughs> that oh, <no>. the people, <laughs> the people who would have like chaser e bios would more often like the pictures where I'm like presenting more feminine rather than the one where I clearly have a dirt stash. Oh no, no! That's... Granted, someone could say that's the hatred of the dirt stash, but you know what? <laughs> I, isn't part of loving men loving their shitty facial hair? I really want to grow a goatee and uh, what's it called? Uh, si sideburns. That's. Oh, I've always loved characters with the, that because, like, I I just feel. I was meant to have that. <laughs> I was yeah. just meant. It's a it's a strong statement. Yeah. Anyways, what percentage of people you've talked to would you guess are chasers? And like around what percentage? I'm not really sure how to quantify that, but I would honestly say it's probably more than even I would suspect because mm -hmm. I have had an experience where I matched with someone on you know, one of the more standard dating apps and like, the, you know, no automatic red flags in their bio. Mm. And then I match with them on Grindr. Um, oh, no. Very, very openly a chaser. Um, so it's like, how, how many are like lurking in the chat? <laughs> any, any chasers in the chat? <laughs> Comment down below if you're a chaser. <laughs> Oh god, I wonder how many like chasers watch trans YouTubers. Oh god. I wonder if like you wouldn't get that many only because like you don't show your face except yeah. like on your social media pages. Yeah, yeah. So also I'm annoying. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you, you burp and they're like, ah, I'm out of here. For the record, I love the burps. I thought they added a lot of artistic Thank you. value. Thank you. So did I. So did I. But apparently people didn't like that. <laughs> also, Jay hated that. That's... <laughs> I know. I, 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 um, I burped once and he was not happy about it. And I, I didn't expect that, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, neither did I. He hates burps. He hates the burps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Any drawn vagina. He's like, it's just the hole. I just think he's misogynistic. Uh, ooh, ooh, the real test would be, does this disgust also apply to holes? Oh. We gotta, we gotta test that sometime. <laughs> and if he's okay with drawn, <laughs> if he's okay with drawn bubbles, yeah, then he's misogynistic. I'm done with women. Wait, uh, at what point do you realize that someone is a chaser? Um, usually it becomes pretty apparent in, like, the language they use, like, mm. you know, if it's, like, infantilizing stuff, I feel like that becomes pretty obvious yeah. early on. Well, maybe not, because, like, I actually feel like the infantilizing stuff can be more subtle, because yeah. sometimes that shows up just as, like, oh my god, you're so cute, and that's, like, a normal dating compliment, mm. but then, like, you get further into the relationship, and you pair that with other stuff, and it's, like, Oh, uh, yeah. um, I, I think another way to tell is chasers don't really ever stop to ask about boundaries because, you know, like oh. every, I mean, every person, but especially with like trans people mm -hmm. has different boundaries about like how they want their body to be touched and how they want it to be referred to. Mm -hmm. uh, in my experience, people who are more just like viewing trans people for sexual pleasure are just gonna automatically assume that you're okay with having your chest or your downstairs touched, uh, are gonna automatically assume what kind of words you want used. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like I shouldn't speak on this too much, but I Not feel good. like it's a bit easier to notice. <laughs> I feel like it's a bit easier to notice when someone's a chaser towards trans women because that tends to be more outwardly sexual. Yeah. But from my experience, a lot of chaser behavior towards trans men is more like subtle infantilization mm. and overlooking boundaries, which I mean, you know, if you were raised a woman and experienced most of your life um, presenting as a woman, then that can honestly seem kind of normal yeah. to you. So Do you might not even question it at first. But the infantilization, I feel it's like quite the opposite of with trans women. I think it's a further extension of how, you know, at the end of the day, chasers view trans women as men mm. who they view on the same level of the, as them as being like over sexual yeah. and just ready to fuck. Mm. And then trans men they view as women mm. who they have to more sneak around things and dodge like you know more of the normal stuff that you'd experience even if like you were a cis woman really but that's just a theory a game theory uh, some of the red flags to me is if someone has like a history of dating a lot of trans men you can't really ask someone about their dating history immediately mm -hmm. i don't know at what point you can ask it's probably different for everyone but i would feel more comfortable knowing if someone has dated like cis guys before because i want to know do you like guys or do you just see trans guys as women light or women spicy yeah exactly because then it's like well at least you're in the men although in my experience even people like that can yeah yeah be a bit yeah because basically even no then there's like the yeah, really, because there is also the whole phenomenon of, like, straight men sleeping with, like, just really feminine twinks, so... Oh, I forgot about that! Yeah, it's, it's, it's so weird to navigate because there's so many things where it's like, okay, well, that could just be, like, coincidence. I feel like the best way to tell really is just, like, either one, if they are one of the people where they're just, like, super outward about it, mm. or just, like, you know, signs piling together, because all of the signs on their own don't yeah. necessarily amount to anything. Yeah. But if it's multiple, it's like, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's what I hate so much, because 
it feels like you're wasting a lot of time, like getting emotionally invested in someone and then realize, oh, you only see me as some, I don't know, <laughs> some toy or whatever. Yeah, it's definitely, there's, there's a longer vetting period than I imagine oh. cis people have. Yeah. Would you still engage with someone knowing that they're a chaser? No, it's just like a waste of time. Because at that point, they don't really see you as like much of a person. Mm. And it, I feel like it just can't lead to a fulfilling relationship. I, I don't doubt that people can not be chasers and then realize it's wrong. Yeah. But you have to think about like the emotional labor of uh, <laughs> doing that. Like it's yeah. just it's a lot to have to teach your partner to view you as yeah. a person. Also like do they really view you as that or have have they just learned all the Yeah, all the true. Rules? So like do do you really view your partner as the gender they say, they say they are or are you just like oh my partner wants me to follow all of these SJW rules? <laughs> Even if you did think they changed their ways, I don't know how you just like <laughs> forget about that. Yeah. Yeah, we have already talked about the difference between chasers who like trans women versus those who like trans men. But mm -hmm. were you familiar with trans mask chasers before coming out? Uh, yes, mainly because of the whole Tumblr soft boy uh, thing. Um, but like, have you learned anything about like trans mask chasers? <laughs> learned anything new well i mean i guess i never really suspected that there would be that many trans mass chasers that are men honestly <laughs> yeah. uh, because even for the tumblr thing as far as i know it was mostly just this woman mm -hmm. but like i said it's grinder that's a, that's an app that's just populated by cis men mm -hmm. and so so many chasers yeah. Um, so it's just like, you think it would be a little safer in a way, because it's like, well, why would a cis man who's straight fetishize this person who like looks like a dude? But I mean, it ultimately comes down to, well, one, a lot of chasers, I feel like, aren't even going after people who are super far into transition. Mm -hmm. But even when they do, they're not viewing them entirely yeah. as a dude. They probably are just, like you mentioned earlier, viewing it as like, ah, uh, they're basically like a tomboy. That that does remind me, I do also think there's the element of trans men are usually easier, especially like trans men that are earlier in their con trans eh, earlier in their transition mm -hmm. and not as like confident in themselves probably. They're they're just way easier to prey on because then they are kind of looking for, you know, Validation. They're gonna be more susceptible to like validation and stuff like that. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to reflect on that later <laughs> with my relationship. But, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, moving on. Um, transition has made me more familiar with what I want relationship-wise. Mm. Um, so I'm just like not even on dating apps right now and it's just like not a focus for me because you know pre T I I definitely did more of that validation seeking through mm. men and then I honestly think Grinder was the final straw for me because it's like wow <laughs> I haven't reached men that aren't point yet. shit <laughs> it's just like men aren't shit. they're kind of gross hey. I don't need approval from these people <laughs> Um, True. And now I'm not even, and now I think I might mostly like women, so that'll be a whole different field of possibly chasers to deal with, I guess. But oh. I'm just not actively dating at the moment, so most mm. of my dating experience is like pre or early T. Mm. Mm. Are, are chasers something you have in the back of your mind whenever you go on dates and even before like someone shows any signs is that like a worry of yours? Oh for sure I think especially with especially with cis men but I feel like that might also just be because that's where my experience lies at the moment um maybe once I start dating more women I'll be like actually yeah they're kind of just as bad I'm done with women you know, I, I have experience with how men talk to women, 
because mm. you know obviously i presented as one once mm. but i don't have any comparison for how women talk to cis men so oh, it's yeah. not like i can it's not oh, like yeah. i can be like well you wouldn't you wouldn't typically say this to like a cis man i do also think there's like where even if you are like a completely passing trans man um people will assume like just because you had that period where you were growing up as a woman mm. you're like on the same wavelength and stuff which mm. i feel like it's it's just wrong for a couple reasons even just ignoring that like those are completely different well not completely different because i i feel like i am at least affected by my female upbringing i know some trans men say they aren't um <laughs> as <laughs> I do when he posted that picture. <laughs> yeah, of him fishing and he's like, and it became a meme. <laughs> it is pretty funny just because like I, I think it's hard not to laugh at anything. <laughs> does, honestly, <laughs> but um, I wouldn't say it's completely impossible. I guess only because if you did have the experience of growing up in a pretty genderless household, that maybe prepared you even for the expectations people outside of your household would put on you as a woman like maybe it wouldn't have really affected you that much mm -hmm. um oh what was i i had a point i, I was going like... somewhere with this <laughs> mood i i think it can be a bit harmful to not acknowledge that trans men can have some of the same faults as cis men only because like oh yeah yeah then <laughs> then they like get away with it like i think it can even be like detrimental to women women to like see a trans man and be like oh he lived his life as a woman he completely understands all my struggles as a woman i don't have to expect any like misogyny or like toxic masculinity from him it's not a realistic expectation because especially if maybe you are a trans man who is very concerned with passing, and I don't want to say this for all trans men who are concerned with passing, because mm. I, I would like to pass someday. I know you would like to pass. Yeah. Um, it's like a common desire, but there are some trans men who get so caught up in the desire to pass as a cis man that they do fall into those habits uh, because they're just uncritically following the steps of cis men mm. and so i feel like it's just it's not realistic to assume that every trans man you come across is going to completely understand the female experience triggered it, it really is it's basically like that um all afabs are safe meanwhile amab means evil yeah and then that's another thing where like if you have that mentality then like Go through i yourself. mean i guess <laughs> Yeah, because, like, I was about to say, like, well, then how do you feel about, like, trans women? Oh, but, I mean, I guess they're... that leaves, <laughs> yeah, I guess but... that just leads to, like, turfism. Um, mm. Where it's, because, like, if you're assuming, <laughs> oh, you grew up with this f female experience, so you're good, then it would be pretty contradictory to not also think, oh, you grew up with this male experience, oh. so you're bad. I absolutely hate that because, especially because those are the types of people that would like glorify a cis gay man and be like, yes, yeah. Oh my god. Okay, I hate to break it to like all the cis women out there, but I'm sorry, cis gay men can are be incredibly misogynistic. Honestly, what I've learned is that everyone's terrible. Everyone's being. <laughs> But it's ridiculous the double standard with that because I have one friend who's um, non-binary and their college had like, uh, I think it was a pole dancing class. You know, it was advertised as being like women and queer friendly, but then like you oh, look no. more at the poster and it's obvious that it's pretty implied that like AMAB people aren't welcome. Well, it was fucking one of yes. DISGUSTING! Uh, women and AFAB non-binary people that basically has just cut their hair short and dyes it, but... Mm, uh, nothing else. Everyone else, go f*** yourself. Like, if you're on tea, go f*** yourself. <laughs> tea Only the queers we're comfortable with. The rest yeah. can get out. Like, as long as we can tell that you were born female. Yeah, that really is, like, the thing. <laughs> 
if you've gone on T, if you've had surgery, if you're AMAB, even if you're trying to pass, or even if you do pass, like, go f*** yourself. I, I saw a post a while ago where it was talking about how whether or not people perceive you as non-binary really boils down to what they perceive your birth sex is, and then, like, versus your presentation. I've just not stopped thinking about it since. Kill everyone now! Condone first-degree murder! Um... Also, feel free to plug your social media or anything you'd like to. Uh, yes. Um, I'm TomatoCore on any social media I use. Uh, my Twitter is currently private, but I plan on changing that soon and hopefully posting art. I like to draw pinups, uh, surrealist art, and then, like, goofy cartoon characters. That's, that's what I tend to dabble in. Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! Woo! <laughs> Hi, me again, Miles here. If you've made it this far into the video, I just want to take a moment to thank you. Making videos is difficult and it can turn pretty boring fast. I've found that I really enjoy involving others in the making of my videos, even though it's something I'm still trying to figure out, like how to do that. As I still really value the input of my audience, I would really like to hear your opinion on this format. Is it something you like or do you want me to go back to just ranting? Do you have any suggestions on how to make it better? Is there any specific video topics you would like me to cover, whether that be by myself or with friends? Please let me know in the comments and once again, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, follow me on Twitter and donate to my Ko-Fi, all the links in the description. Also, I've just opened headshot commissions for $30 a piece. If you want a new cool profile picture by the one and only, you'll find my commission sheets on Twitter. That's all, take care.